Okay guys, in this video we're going to start off by talking about some attractive forces and then move on to chemical and physical properties and changes, okay? So first of all, as we go through the year, we're going to be spending a lot of time talking about chemical bonding and reactions and polarities and solubilities and gases and reactions and a bunch of math that goes into it. But a lot of that conversation starts off with a basic understanding of what a chemical bond is versus an intermolecular force, okay? So let's talk about those two different things. So chemical bonds, these are things you talk about a lot maybe in biology, um, in terms of holding things together, breaking apart, you know, ATP, ADP, that kind of stuff. Um, so they're what hold a compound together as part of the molecule, okay? We have two types, ionic bonds and covalent bonds, okay? You probably have heard both those terms before also. Um, if we go over here to our image, we see that we have hydrogen, little white ball here, and, and chlorine, the green one. Um, those two things are held together in a bond. So we made a compound called hydrogen chloride. And what holds that compound together is a covalent bond. It's one of our two types of chemical bonds. So this chemical bond is actually a very strong attractive force that holds these two things together. Okay, um, It's part of the molecule. It's part of the compound. It's internal. And it is stronger than the intermolecular forces that we see next to it. Okay. So these are our chemical bonds. So anytime we do a chemical change in the future, do a chemical reaction, we're talking about chemical changes, that's going to affect these bonds that are inside these compounds or molecules. However, we also can do changes that are more physical in nature. And when we mess around with the physical world versus the chemical world, we're playing around with these intermolecular forces or these things between the two molecules. Okay? So intermolecular forces, which we always just kind of abbreviate IMF, it stands for intermolecular forces. We're really creative here. Um, it's that attractive force between two different substances. Okay, so it's not inside the compound; it's between two compounds. That's what. Thus, the term intermolecular. Inter meaning between, right? Like an interstate road, it goes between states. All right. So, um, when you have an intermolecular force. It is still attractive force because when you have a bunch of hydrogen chloride floating around, they actually attract to each other. Now you have one molecule and another molecule. The attraction between the two is that intermolecular force. We see the same thing down here with water molecules. So here we have a compound of water, the H2O, and these dotted lines represent the forces holding water together. Now we all have seen water before, right? When it comes down to rain, and, and of course we've all seen water, but we've all seen like raindrops that kind of form these little bubbles, or if you like, if it rains on top of like a smooth surface, like a waxed car or something, they form up these nice little bubbles. Well, the reason why water holds itself together so well is because these intermolecular forces help hold everything together. It keeps the drops together. It's also why it hurts me belly flop because it creates surface tension. Okay, so intermolecular forces definitely play a big role in our world, but it's just not a chemical bond. Okay, so we want to make sure we keep these two things separate. Chemical bonds is our chemical world. It's inside the molecule. Intermolecular forces more rules our physical world, and it's between two molecules as we were. When we identify them, solid lines is a chemical bond. The dotted line or dashed line is our intermolecular force. Okay, kind of keep that in the back of your head as we move forward this year, because we'll talk about both and kind of need to have an appreciation of when are we talking chemical and when are we talking physical. All right.